Brandy, and you're watching Now That's Memphis, the segment where we highlight people and places that make Memphis special and keep you up to date with what's happening in and around the city. Kids and teens across the city are back in school, and one of the many things parents need to think about is safety, how to make sure your children are safe at school, at home, and online. And here to talk to us about the best ways to do that is Chris Krim with the Memphis Child Advocacy Center. Thank you for being here, Chris. Brandy, thank you for having me. You're welcome. And so before we go over the tips, we're going to talk about Memphis Child Advocacy Center. Tell us about the organization. Yeah, the Memphis Child Advocacy Center provides services to children who have either either been victims of severe physical abuse or sexual abuse. Uh, we provide uh, forensic interviews, um, we provide family advocacy, therapy and counseling for children and families, and we also provide prevention outreach to our community to educate folks about how to keep children safe. Okay, and so let's go over these tips. So the first one we have is set boundaries and share boundaries. What does that look like? Yeah, I think that really looks like making sure that all adults who are interacting with our children are aware that we've had conversations with our child about their own safety, about body safety, about the correct name for body parts, um, that we are making sure that, you know, we're not asking children to do anything that makes them uncomfortable, um, and just making sure that we are setting the expectation and setting the tone for um, all the spaces and places where children spend time. Okay, and the second tip, uh, minimize opportunity for offenders to have access. How do you do that when your kids are not in your sight 24-7? Yeah. So we know that 80% of the time child abuse occurs in isolated one-on-one -on -one situations. So we want to make sure that any place where our child spends time, whether that be in person or online, uh, is a space that's as safe as possible. And what we really teach at the Child Advocacy Center is making sure that those types of interactions, one-on-one -on -one interactions, are observable and interruptible. So are things like mentoring and tutoring and coaching, uh, are those things important? Absolutely. Uh, what we also want to think about, is there any way to make those interactions with adults or older or larger youth safer? Um, and so we want to make sure that we are not doing activities in closed door spaces, um, that we are checking in with our kids when they're spending time online. You know, who are you talking to online? What type of games are you playing? You know, who are you interacting with? Uh, making sure that we are plugged in and a part of that. So observable and interruptible. Absolutely. That's a good, a good phrase to remember. Next one, have conversations with your children about boundaries and safety. Yeah, I think one thing as adults that can certainly make us feel like we're stepping out of our comfort zone a little bit is talking about things like the correct names for body parts, sex, and sexuality. But really what we want to remind folks is, is that it's important that we are the go-to person in a child's life, uh, particularly if it's our own child, um, that they come and ask us if they have any questions about those things, uh, if anyone has ever made them uncomfortable or approached them or said something to them or sent them a photo or um, asked to be touch or asking them to, to, to touch, um, we want to be sure that our children are coming to us and talking about those types of encounters and interactions. So really we just want to make sure that that open line of communication is there and that, that there's a high level of trust between us and our child um, and that they're willing to come speak to us. And so how do you approach the conversation when you know that the child that you want to have the conversation with is is probably going to be resistant to it, probably uncomfortable, doesn't yeah. want to talk about it? How do you approach that? Well, it's not always a, a perfect situation, but I think one way to kind of help with that is to make sure that it is an ongoing conversation. So we're not having a, a one-time, you know, sit-down conversation about all those important things. That It is um, a conversation that we're having throughout the child's life uh, and their childhood and making sure that we are having um, kind of checking age-appropriate conversations along the way. And again, I'm not saying that we download everything at age three or four, right. but we certainly want to have those ongoing conversations about body safety, about sex about sexuality, um, and just answer any questions that our children may have. Okay, and so the next tip, react responsibly when you suspect or discover abuse. I would think responsibly is the key word yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. So in Tennessee, as well as in Mississippi and many other states throughout our country, we are what's called universal mandated reporters. So in Tennessee, if you are age 18 or older, regardless of your profession or your walk in life, whether you're a parent or grandparent or not, um, if you're age 18 or older, you're what I call a first responder. The state wants to hear from you should you have any concerns about a child's safety 
if you have any concerns that a child is being abused or neglected, um, the authorities want to hear from us. So uh, we have not only a moral obligation to report any suspicions of child abuse or neglect, but we also in our state have a legal obligation to do so. Um, there's a couple different avenues that, that are at your disposal to be able to do so. Um, you can make a report online and there's a, a website for that. You can visit our website, memphiscac.org, to learn more about how to make a report. Um, there's also a child, Tennessee child abuse hotline that you can call. Uh, we also like to remind folks that you can make an anonymous report. So it, should you have any concerns about your own safety or your family's safety or uh, if it's a job situation, um, you don't necessarily have to share your contact information with the, um, with the authorities. You can make an anonymous report. And so I always encourage people, if you're on the fence, um, at least make an anonymous report mm -hmm. so that the authorities can look into this matter and ensure that this child is safe. And if they're not, that, that we can begin um, you know, taking the appropriate actions to make that occur. All right, and the final tip, educate yourself. Yeah, so we have a wonderful training at the Memphis Child Advocacy Center called Stewards of Children. We've utilized that training to educate over 30,000 adults in Shelby County from about 400 different organizations. Uh, and we offer that training in both an in-person and a virtual format. So there, there are a couple different ways that you can take part in that training. But we really encourage folks to take Stewards of Children to learn more about how to keep children safe, how to keep our organizations safe, uh, how to make sure that we are prepared to respond should we have any suspicions suspicions about child abuse or neglect, um, and that we just know the appropriate actions to take. Okay, and how long is the training? The training is two and a half hours. Uh, and it's not we, a lot of time. It's not a lot of time when we think about, you know, what is really more important to us than a child's safety, and really I can't think of anything. So right. uh, when it comes to our children, it's well worth the investment of a couple hours of our time to make sure that we are creating safe homes, safe schools, and safe spaces. All right. Well, thank you, Chris. You've given us some valuable information. And if you want to find those tips, you can go to our website, abc24.com slash now that's Memphis. I'm Brandy. Thanks for watching.